we will have a Rob um, uh, Rod Cope uh, who will uh, join us. Hello, Rod. How are you? Good. How are you? I'm doing really well. And uh, so you will tell us uh, uh, your your point of view. Uh, about like API automation for DevOps at scale, how to go from code to API product while ensuring compliance. And in, in this regulatory driven world, compliance is key. This is why we're really glad to have you explaining how we can handle automation and compliance in the same time. Enjoy your present on stage. Okay, thanks. And you can see the slides, right? Yep, perfectly. Okay, great. All right. so. Uh, as you mentioned, there's there's a lot to unpack <laughs> just in the title. We've got automation, DevOps, scale, compliance. So we'll take a quick look at how these things come together and actually uh, kind of reinforce each other and how you can go faster with compliance uh, than ever you could in the past. So we'll do a, a quick introduction. You know, we'll look at some of the challenges around what, what a lot of enterprises face today with APIs, especially at scale. We'll talk about what that means. Security, compliance, the G word, governance, nobody wants to hear about that, but we have to live with it. And then how does API automation boost DevOps? And what, what exactly does that mean? So we'll talk about that and then we'll kind of wrap up and go through some questions. So I'm Rod Cope, CTO of Perforce. I've been uh, a CTO for over 20 years now, so, uh, a lot of experience on kind of both the creating side and the consuming side of technology, a lot of Fortune 500s, uh, my own startup, Open Logic, and some things in between. And uh, now kind of focused on at uh, Perforce on kind of enabling DevOps at scale in lots of different ways. One of those ways is with DevOps and APIs. So if you, you think about your DevOps environment, what you get done, it's about automation consistency, repeatability at scale, right? If you think about Docker, Kubernetes, just Jenkins, cloud usage, et cetera, it's scripts, it's APIs, it's spinning up environments, running tests, shutting things down via API. Tightly intertwined, couldn't live without them. On the other hand, what people aren't always as good at, although they fit together really well, is using DevOps for your own API work to spin up APIs, to version APIs, life cycle, um, move from environment to environment safely without humans interacting and do manual system administration work, which is incredibly error prone and kind of dangerous. So to do that at scale and to expose your APIs to the world safely with security as things come and go and they change and get versioned, API uh, DevOps, management of APIs is critical to automate that too. You don't want to do your API creation and your API development lifecycle manually and use DevOps for everything else. It doesn't make sense. So DevOps reinforces APIs and vice versa. And both of these require a pretty big uh, mindset change for IT and especially culture. I think a lot of people know DevOps can be quite disruptive. Talk about how teams work, used to throw things over the wall to QA, separate staging environment, separate security people, separate deployment people, release people, et cetera. Now those are getting more mixed, more shared, more automated, but it's it can really run into challenges when you talk about ownership and internal fiefdoms and resource control, things like that in the enterprise that get in the way, overhead. But it's, it is a, a mindset culture shift similar with doing APIs, I think, the right way at scale as opposed to by hand, which a lot of us are still doing now. So kind of in bold, you, you can see the, the key concept here is API automation at scale. That's the key to overcoming these common challenges and accelerating development while ensuring quality and security and governance we'll, we'll talk about. So this means things like creating APIs uh, on the fly, having a place to expose those to, to customers once they're ready or only internally, portals, chats, usage tracking, et cetera. We'll get into that. Automating security governance, compliance, not again, trying to do that one at a time. When you're talking about globally distributed development teams nowadays, it just doesn't make sense to do this manually. And so the net is automated API management makes you go faster all around. Less overhead when it comes to checkpoints and 
less redoing work when things fail, when somebody makes a typo or accidentally exposes something and, and does damage. So let's talk about some of those challenges with security compliance governance, again, at scale and enterprises. Well, first, securing APIs. I think everybody realizes, yes, you have to secure a, an API, but a, a recent poll kind of showed that almost half of respondents aren't really confident in their ability to detect whether uh, bad actors are accessing APIs and a little more than half aren't confident, confident that their security team even knows all the APIs that exist in the organization. So things are getting into production, kind of bypassing the, the checks and balances, the IT, the central operations, governance, QA, et cetera. Maybe developers are spinning up instances in cloud and making APIs available. And suddenly now you've got another way to access private data, maybe secure data, maybe in ways you didn't expect or, or ways you didn't want, but you don't even know what's happening. And I think Gardner actually called this out as a pretty significant risk. So as this race continues to scale up and add more APIs, you know, it used to be a handful, then dozens, hundreds, now it's in many cases thousands for global development organizations. You can't ignore the security threats at the scale. You can't have one-off solutions team by team to deal with this. But not only do you have to secure the APIs in production at scale, you need to secure the life cycle. Otherwise you have those holes, things getting out in, into the wild that you didn't expect or haven't gone through your, your full process to lock down, especially in DevOps. Now that you're able to spin up environments so quickly in multiple clouds, hybrid environments and Docker and Kubernetes and things are coming and going so quickly that humans aren't looking at every single thing individually, you have to be even more confident that your processes are doing the right thing, are vetted and automated in the right ways with manual checkpoints where you need them. So DevOps really sits at the crossroads of IT, digital innovation, digital transformation, and they're key to securing that whole life cycle as well as the production deployment piece. That brings us to compliance. So if you think about 91% of organizations say they've had an API security incident in the last year, that's very scary. So some things are getting through the holes, the cracks, right? Checks and balances aren't working somewhere. Compliance governance challenges can cost a lot of money. If you get, you get exposed, you expose personal information, you've got GDPR and PCI and HIPAA and other regulations. Third-party auditors find something they don't like. You can be fine. You can be shut down. Very disruptive. Risky, of course. Non-compliance is too dangerous to, to get wrong. You've got to comply. Um, and you don't want all that compliance to slow things down. We've still got to go fast, faster than ever. Time to market is still critical. How do you balance these things, go fast, while continuously complying? So API management platforms help automate policies for security, authentication, authorization, compliance, logging, redacting logs, private information, et cetera, guaranteeing and reporting and managing SLAs. All those aspects come together as part of compliance. And then finally, again, the G word, governance. <laughs> uh, not exactly what you think of first when you talk about going faster. You know, what, what do you have to do? What extra... You know, hoops do you have to jump through as a development team, a DevOps team? What are you responsible for? What are you not responsible for? Where does the security team step in or a separate governance, corporate compliance kind of team, auditors step in? I think one of the important bits here is with an API management platform that thinks about this up front, you can kind of decouple those individual APIs, those products essentially you're selling to your customers from what's exposed in those endpoints that the world sees. So you can more cleanly delineate and kind of demarcate responsibility. What is the DevOps team responsible for? What is IT, security, and, and other groups responsible for? And ideally, you apply these policies at high level to be automatically enforced, automatically uh, delegated based on priority, based on type of API, et cetera, in an automated fashion. Again, you can't say it enough. There's still too many people doing this by hand one at a time or one team at a time, one division, one geography, one technical platform at a time, one stack at a time, just doesn't make sense. 
All right, so a lot of challenges. How do we get API automation to help go faster and boost this work? Well, if you think about, again, DevOps sitting in the middle of everything, uh, that there's a lot going on. You're exposing the APIs to internal users, partners, customers, third-party developers. Um, they're coming in through lots of different mechanisms, UI portals, um, combinations of mobile and web and other devices, IoT. You're trying to enforce throttling, bandwidth, quotas, get analytics from both the technical bits as well as the business side of things. Now you're expanding into microservices, often hundreds or thousands of microservices. That's a lot of moving parts. You don't, again, you don't want each one of these teams or each one of these silos to solve all these problems on their own. It's wasteful. It's way too slow. And there are better ways to do it. So if you think about APIs being that front door, that that true gateway to the rest of the world, you can implement all of these key features that are shared across all APIs once, and then just focus on implementing the API and adding business value behind the scenes. So it really ties it together. So speaking of automation, automate security policies, you know, an API management platform can give you that and protect against things like the OWASP API security top 10. You know, really common violators you can see of, of kind of top five there. You see authorization, authentication, authorization, <laughs> broken authentication. You see the multiple different flavors of kind of saying the same thing, which is you've, you've relied on individual teams to implement this on their own, and it's too easy to make a mistake. It's too easy to forget something. You want these policies to be applied at a high level automatically where nobody has the ability to forget. It's a, a fail-safe type implementation that helps you scale. Now you can focus less on the details of that security and again more on, on business value. It can also help with compliance and simplify compliance when this is automated. So if you're automating common tasks, steps, configurations, templates, policies, all these reusable aspects of API lifecycle management and deployment, you get better repeatability, you go faster and get better and less stressful Honestly, compliance results. You don't have to sweat it out every time. And if you look at a very common kind of industries that develop standards around this, like fire with healthcare, PSD2, and others with open banking, uh, if you can apply kind of standard sets of policies that are tailored for those uh, environments, it makes it way easier to share data with your partners, for example, to you know redact the right information, the right critical personal information, for example, from, from logs or to enforce a set of policies that need to be enforced across um, maybe all of a certain connection to a certain customer or partner or a certain kind of API, you can do that all in one place. And then finally, for end-to-end -end -end governance as well. So you get consistency, and that's really the key. If you've got developers using Node and Java and, and Python and uh, cloud deployed, hybrid deployed, on-prem deployed software, lots of different stacks in different geographies, hard to get consistency and reliability and stability across that. So API automation and a good platform can give you that consistency, saves a lot of time and cost and overhead, lets you reuse more than you could have in the past. And so now you can build APIs focused on specific business goals uh, more than ever. And in track, this is really critical for governance to know exactly where, who, how these APIs uh, are being generated by, who's deploying them, who's using them. So you can have a kind of a steel thread end-to-end -end ability to audit um, and know exactly what's happening in, inter in the enterprise and to have a, a reasonable standard of care for what you're doing. So when something inevitably, unfortunately, will happen at some point in the future, some some issue, you'll be able to track and say, well, here's exactly what we did and in what order and hopefully minimize and be able to quickly recover from anything that does kind of go wrong. So kind of the, the net is, you know, really focused on at scale. You know, if you've got three APIs, none of this is going to be a problem you can sit down in a room with a handful of people and knock this stuff out. 
if you've got hundreds or thousands of them spread around the world, now you've got an entirely different kind of problem. So don't think of API as, as a separate beast from the rest of the software you're deploying, like web applications, UIs, mobile apps. It should still be automated end to end. And think about how you do that in a DevOps environment. Go faster, continuously ensure security, compliance, and governance. You know, it's like back to the old um, early days of Agile and XP and extreme programming. You know, we used to do integrations once a year or, or every several months, and they were painful and nobody wanted to do it. That's like security, compliance, governance. But if you start doing all those things every day, you take the sting out of it. You automate it. It's just part of the standard process. Now it's not an event. It's not something to be stressed over. It's something you do all the time. You're always secure, always in compliance, always being governed. You don't have to worry about an, an audit or, or kind of a hacking attempt or different teams going off in different directions and causing problems. You're always up to speed. So deliver continuous value all the time. So summarize, lots of challenges. I'm not saying any of this stuff is easy. None of it's trivial. Security is just hard. There's a lot to keep up with. There's new attacks and things every day. So whatever you implement, hopefully a good API management platform that does this for you, that gives you kind of best of breed security and keeps up with those changes and attacks, that can make that easier. Still a lot maybe to comply with audits, to prove that you're being governed well. It does take a lot of work. There's no way around that. But if you do it right, you bake it into your DevOps. It's not a separate thing to the rest of the code you're developing and you do it every day. It becomes a lot easier over time. So API automation solves these challenges and boosts your DevOps efficiency. And with that, I will stop and see if we have questions. And, and while we're getting to those, be sure to visit the virtual booth, the Econa booth, to learn more about how you can accelerate uh, with DevOps and the APIs. And you can register for a chance to win an Amazon gift card. Yeah, thank you very much, uh, Rod. So we have a uh, first question about uh, the API security. So it seems we have a new API security companies uh, coming out. Uh, do you consider API security to be part of uh, API management? Uh, or uh, can, do you think we can have API management solution, classic solution on one side, and API security dedicated solution on the other side? Um, well, I think it's a good question. I think it probably depends on your API management vendor. I think uh, maybe some of them maybe are a little more lightweight. They're more of a, of a, a you know a smart proxy or a gateway, uh, something that's more about uh, shuttling traffic uh, than it is about security. If you have um, more of a robust enterprise solution like an Econa, for example, that, that kind of has world-class security baked in you know, from day one and uh, is, is kind of trusted by the largest financial institutions in the world to get that right, then that's a different beast. Um, could you use a separate security tool with your API management platform? Sure. I mean, there's no reason why you, you couldn't do that. You could put it in front of the API management tool a little more internet facing, for example. Uh, you could even put it behind the API management solution. Maybe you've, you've got it deployed in the cloud and you want, for whatever reason, an, an extra layer of protection before accessing your behind the firewall implementations. You can do that. But uh, ideally, I, I think it really makes a lot more sense to have that combined you know, single API management platform that gives you uh, the things we talked about, including that security, so you've got one place to go. You can't or you don't have to worry about something falling through the cracks. You know, policies getting out of sync. You know, there's a lot of a lot of uh, new kind of security attacks that, that really you, know, you know, focus on that. Um, kind of the you know, if you, you look at the latest kind of a, attacks with uh, various uh, tunneling and, and spoofing type things that rely on differences between components where you'd separate your security into two parts, for example, um, there are new vulnerabilities that are exposed that way. So ideally it's in one place so you can have one standard set of security policies that automatically apply everywhere all the time. And you don't have to worry about that configuration drift causing problems. You talk about security compliance and regulations. So in the last years we've, we've seen new practices like DevSecOps 
or dev reg ops for regulation, how these two would work with API management? Um, I think they go very naturally together. You know, as people start to think more about security earlier in the process, as opposed to it's another after the fact thing, hey, let's get everything working and fast and great user, user experience and then let's just bolt on some security at the end. I think as people start to think more uh, importantly and spend more effort on security earlier in the process, it perfectly fits API management where from day one, you should be thinking about when I expose this to the public internet, where are my vulnerabilities, where are the weaknesses, where could we be attacked? Not just thinking about happy path, which is great for your end users and, and partners, but put the put the uh, you know the black hat on and think about how do I uh, cause problems, disrupt things, um, send bad payloads, malware, um, send poorly formed um, uh, p- packets or JSON payloads, XML, whatever your API is. And, and try to do damage, try to expose data, try to corrupt things. I think you, it really helps to think more about that in a DevSecOps mindset up front. So again, it's not a fire drill at the end. It's not a, uh, it, it doesn't kind of get uh, short shrift and, and uh, potentially run into issues down the road. Now, again, I always recommend use something like API management with security baked in so you can cut out the majority of those issues right away. But, but it's still important to think of security all the way through, you know, defense in depth, no, you know, hard crunchy outside with the soft chewy center when it comes to security. You, you want it to be tough all the way through. Don't let one little ability to penetrate from, a, from an attacker make it easy for them to go all the way. So uh, we have regulation in banking in a lot of parts of the world. We have regulation in healthcare in the USA and, and in other places of the world. We have privacy regulations coming in, uh, in, in a lot of places. So w- do you think uh, an enterprise-grade API management solution can cover them all? Or do you think we need specific API management solutions for every, uh, for at least specific features for every regulation-driven uh, um, API market? Um, I, I think it is possible to have a horizontal solution. And the reason why is if you think about what an API management platform does, it's it's looking at incoming requests, it's doing something with them, it's passing on to the to the final implementation for the API to get executed, taking the results, doing something else to it, and handing the results back. So all that is the same no matter what your API is, what implementation language or platform or technology is. Uh, what your payload is, what the security protocols are, all those things are the same. It's more about which policies do I apply? Do I need to convert from JSON to XML? Do I need to handle OAuth and OpenID? Uh, Am I applying different security? Do I need to convert to an internal JMS queue, for example, or go to the mainframe and convert? Do I need to re-swizzle data? Do I need to blacklist, whitelist, enforced extra authorization rules? Uh, redact data, all those kind of things are more of a configurable policy kind of thing. So for an industry, you could apply open banking policies and standards or healthcare policies and standards and kind of snap those in to a well-designed you know, API management platform that is horizontally capable with those industry-specific plugins available. Yeah, thank you very much. Uh, uh, thank you very much, uh, Rod. I think uh, we're exactly at, at the right timing. And and yes, so uh, so if you want to more, you know more information about uh, what you're building, we can go on Akana booth directly or on directly on the, the website or reach you maybe via LinkedIn, uh, you know, to engage the discussion. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Sounds like a plan. Thank you very much, Rod. Thank you.